This video on genetic engineering is being made to show how modeling the process can make inaccessibly small entities and processes visible. To do it in the classroom, you will need a box such as the one that photocopying paper comes in, covered in green and labeled as a plant cell, a yogurt pot labeled as a plant bacterium, the two paper DNA templates from the resource, scissors and sticky tape. Throughout, the blue writing explains what's going on in the genetic engineering process and the green writing explains how you can model it in the classroom. So the first step is to find the gene for the desirable trait. And the desirable trait that we're going to work with is an insecticidal protein produced by the cry gene, which is found in the bacterial chromosome of Bacillus thuringiensis. Now bacterial chromosomes are circular so to model it, you need to cut around the dotted line and secure the template in a circle using sticky tape. We're also going to need a vector. That's a DNA molecule used to carry foreign DNA into another cell. And we're going to take it from a plant bacterium called Agrobacterium tumefaciens. Because plasmids are loops of DNA, which are also found in bacteria, to model it again, you need to cut around the dotted line and secure the template in a circle using sticky tape. So you'll end up with a round plasmid shown in white on the left, and you'll end up with a model of the bacterial chromosome shown on the right with the gene of interest for the cry protein. So the second step is then to isolate the gene using enzymes. Restriction enzymes recognize specific DNA sequences and cut them in a predictable way like a pair of molecular scissors. And here you can see a stretch of DNA and the purple blob is intended to model a restriction enzyme. BAMH1 is actually the restriction enzyme that we're going to use. It cuts the sequence GGATCC and as you can see, it leaves four base pair single-stranded DNA overhangs either end where it cuts the DNA. You're going to model this process by cutting the restriction enzyme sites on the model DNA using scissors, leaving those four base pair single-stranded DNA overhangs, which are known as sticky ends. Because on the plasmid, there is a single restriction enzyme site, when you cut it, you will end up with a linearized version of the plasmid, which has got those ba uh, four base pair single-stranded overhangs either end of it. Because in the bacterial chromosome, there are two restriction enzyme sites, you can use them to cut either end of the gene of interest, which is the gene for the cry protein, so that you get two separate linear strands from the bacterial chromosome, the one with the gene of interest and the one for the rest of the bacterial chromosome. The third step is then to insert the gene into a plasmid vector from a plant bacteria to make recombinant DNA. So we have a linearized plasmid from Agrobacterium tumor faciens, and we have the gene encoding the insecticidal protein from Bacillus thuringiensis. To make recombinant DNA, you join two strands of DNA together. In the lab, another enzyme called ligase is used to ligate or stick the gene for the desirable trait into the plasmid vector. We're going to use sticky tape to play the role of ligase in our modeling exercise here. So although it's not to scale, we can get rid of the rest of the bacterial chromosome and if you look at the four base pair overhangs, you would get base pairing between the C and the G and the T and the A of the sticky ends on the end of the gene for the desirable trait and within the plasmid. So by using sticky tape to join these together, you can make a model of the recombinant plasmid, which has got the gene for the cry protein inside it in the classroom. The fourth step is then to insert the recombinant plasmid vector into the plant bacteria to genetically modify the plant bacteria. The process of inserting a vector into a bacteria is known as transformation. And in order to get the plasmid vector 
through the cell membrane, it will need to be coiled for it to go through. So we can show this in the classroom using the yogurt pot plant bacteria and our model of the recombinant plasmid, simply by twisting it up and putting it into the model plant bacteria. The next step is then to mix genetically modified plant bacteria and plant cells. The gene for the desirable trait will transfer into some of the plant cells to make them genetically modified. And you could get students to try and throw the paper model of the recombinant plasmid from the yogurt pot into the box. I'm sure that at least some of them in your class are likely to miss as they do so. And that way you can model the fact that this is not a process that works 100% of the time. So the plant bacterium, Agrobacterium tumefaciens, actually transfers the plasmid vector into the plant cell to make genetically engineered plant cells with fairly high success rate. So although some students might miss, hopefully most of them will manage to transfer their recombinant plasmids into the plant cells. So in the classroom, you might want to have them a bit further away, but essentially they will then just transfer their recombinant plasmid from the yogurt pot plant bacterium into the box representing the plant cell. And you will end up with a plant cell which has got the recombinant plasmid containing the gene for the cry protein, the insecticide or toxin inside it. Researchers would then grow these plant cells on nutrient agar and then take the little plantlets into soil and grow those in order to create genetically modified crop plants. And that is how you can model the process of genetic engineering in the classroom.